This lecture covers how to calculate the standard deviation of a two-asset portfolio. I'm your professor, Dr. Stephen Haggard. Here we have the two stocks that I used in my video on the risk and returns of portfolios. We were able to find the expected return and the variance for each stock using the techniques described in that video. And using the variance, all we have to do is take the square root to get to the standard deviation for each one. In the video on risk and returns of portfolios, the way that we calculated the standard deviation for the portfolio required calculating the covariance, which is what we're doing in this slide here. Calculating the covariance is similar to calculating the variance only you wind up with the sum of the sixth column being covariance instead of variance. Here is how we calculated the standard deviation of a two-asset portfolio in the Risk and Returns of Portfolios video. We actually calculated the variance and we said it was equal to the portfolio weight of component A squared times the variance of the returns of A plus the portfolio weight of component B squared times the variance of B plus 2 times the portfolio weight of A times the portfolio weight of B times the covariance of A with B. Where did we get these numbers? Well, we've calculated them previously. We were actually given the portfolio weights. They were, we were told that the portfolio is 60% item A, which is Supertech, and 40% item B, which is Slowpoke. Remember, your portfolio weights always must add to 1. We have also calculated the variance of A as 0 .0585, refer back to the second slide, and the variance of B as 0 .011 from the same slide. The covariance of negative 0 .001 was calculated on the slide just prior to this one. And we put all those things together in our formula and we come up with the variance of the portfolio being 0 0.02234. In order to get the standard deviation for the portfolio, all we have to do is take the square root. And remember that taking it to the 0.5 power or to the 1 half power is exactly the same thing as taking the square root. And that gives us 0.1495 or 14.95% standard deviation for portfolio returns. Using covariance to calculate portfolio standard deviation, however, can get complicated when we get more than two assets. For example, the same formula for three assets would be xA squared times the variance of A plus xB squared times the variance of B plus xc squared times the variance of c plus 2xaxb covariance of a with b 2xbxc covariance of b with c plus 2xaxc covariance of a with c. Nobody wants to do all that calculation, so we need an easier way. And that easier way is to find the expected return of the portfolio in each state of the economy and then treat the portfolio in the same manner that you would treat a stock for calculating standard deviation. In other words, we will look at the returns in each of the scenario for the portfolio in exactly the same way that we would examine the returns of a stock. Getting back to our example, we have $60 worth of Supertech and $40 worth of Slowpoke. We add those numbers together and know that we have a $100 portfolio. So the weights, as we mentioned earlier, are 0.6 for Supertech and 0.4 for Slowpoke. Now we can find the expected return on any portfolio in any state of the economy by simply finding the weighted average of the returns on the portfolio components in that state of the economy. For example, we could find the expected return of the portfolio in depression as the weight on A times the expected return on stock A in depression plus the weight on B times the expected return on stock B in depression. We can do that for any state of the economy. Our next step is to find the expected return in each economic state. 
In our example, the four economic states are depression, recession, normal, and boom. In order to find the expected return of the portfolio in depression, we need to take the weight on A in the portfolio and multiply it by the expected return on A in depression plus the weight on B in the portfolio times the expected return on B in depression. The numbers that we put in for those, the weight on A is 0.6 as previously mentioned, and as we've shown previously, the expected return on stock A is negative 30% or negative 0.30 in depression. The expected return on stock B in depression is zero, and it has a portfolio weight of 0.4. And so when we work out our math, we see that the portfolio is expected to return minus 18% during depression. We can do the same thing now for recession. In recession, stock A is expected to return negative 10% and stock B is expected to return positive 5%. And when we do our calculation, we find that the expected return, therefore, of the portfolio in recession is minus 4% or minus 0.04. In normal times, we expect both stocks to return 20%. In this case, we don't even have to do the math because if everything is 20%, then the expected return for the portfolio is also going to be 20%. And finally, we need to find out what is the expected return of the portfolio in boom times. Stock A is expected to return 50% in boom times, while stock B is expected to lose 5%. And when we do our calculation, we see that therefore the expected return of the portfolio in boom times is 0.28 or 28%. I always like to be able to check my work to make sure that I did things correctly. So the first thing we can do here is to calculate what should be the expected return of the portfolio using the values we just calculated. And the way we do this is to take the probability of each state of the economy multiplied by the expected return of the portfolio in that state of the economy. And then we will add all those together, all the different states. And so we can find the expected return of the portfolio as 0.1, that's 10% probability of depression, multiplied by negative 0.18, which is the expected return of the portfolio in depression, plus 0.2, that's the probability of recession, times the expected return of the portfolio in recession of minus 0.04, plus 0.5, that's the probability of normal times, times the expected return of the portfolio in normal times of 0.2, plus 0.2, that's the 20% chance of boom, times 0.28, that's the expected return of the portfolio in boom times. And when we add all these things together, we get that the expected return of our portfolio is 0.13, or 13%. This is exactly the same answer that we got when we find the weighted average of the expected return of the individual stocks. If you refer back to the second slide, you'll see that the expected return of A is 15%, and the expected return of B is 10%. And when we use our portfolio weights, we see that that gives us 0.13, or 13% expected return on the portfolio. Since these answers match, we know we have done our second set of calculations correctly. Now we are finally ready to find the variance and therefore the standard deviation of our portfolio. Note that we have this table set up as if it were a single stock. We're treating the portfolio as if it were a single stock. And column three, instead of being the stock rate of return in a given state, is now the portfolio return in a given state. And column four is the deviation from the expected return of 13% for the portfolio. Column five is the squared deviation. And column six is merely the probability times the squared deviation. So how would I recommend you go about this? I would, instead of working each column individually, I would work each row and then use the memory on your calculator. 
For example, I would start with negative 0.18, subtract 0.13 because that's the expected return of the portfolio. That's going to give me the minus 0.31 in column 4. Then I would square that deviation using the square button on my calculator. And then I would multiply by the probability of 0.10 and hit equal. At this point, I would hit store 1 and store the depression product for column 6 in location 1. And then I would go through and do that for each of the states of the economy, storing the results as 2, 3, and 4. And when I get done, all I do is add recall 1 plus recall 2 plus recall 3 plus recall 4. And that gives me my variance of 0 0.02234. Now to find the standard deviation, all I have to do is take the square root of the variance. And the square root of 0 0.02234 is 0.1495 or 14.95%, which is exactly the same standard deviation of portfolio returns that we got when we used covariance to calculate it.